Well, it's important for people to understand that the 9-11 uh, truth movement had a decisive impact on the November 2006 congressional elections. We know, I think, quite clearly that Rove and uh, the regime were confident in their ability to use the demagogy of terrorism, in other words, the nonsense story about bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, the 19 hijackers, and all the rest of it, to try to terrify and stampede the electorate once again, provide cover for vote fraud once again, as it had worked in 02 and in 04. Uh, but this time it didn't work. And I think the, the critical difference actually was the Alex Jones conference held in Los Angeles in June of 2006. And above all the fact that that was on C-SPAN at least four times and enjoyed the largest audience in C-SPAN history. And it seems to me worked a profound change in the overall climate of opinion in the sense that a whole series of intellectuals and opinion leaders across the United States and indeed around the world saw the bankruptcy and the demagogy of the official 9-11 version. It is, after all, a racist, fascist, militarist myth, odious in the eyes of anybody with any self-respect or, or integrity. Uh, and somehow, as some commentators have, have uh, noted, the life went out of the booze as far as the 9-11 the story, when it just couldn't be used anymore to terrify people. And I think that's the critical thing. That's why the Republicans lost the House and the Senate. The Republicans uh, lost it. The Democrats certainly didn't win it. If we look at, at pathetic specimens of parliamentary cretinism, like Mrs. Pelosi or Harry Reid or the rest of them, we, can't, we certainly cannot think that these people electrified the voters to go out and vote for them. It was, they were sort of there by default. So the, the question we now have is we've got polling that says that about 80% of the U.S. population does not believe the myth. There are about 15% or 16% who do believe the myth, 3% don't know. That leaves 80% who are either strongly rejecting the myth or skeptical you know, in a somewhat more uh, diluted way. Now, that means the American people have understood. The problem you now have is the institutions, academia, the media, the political parties, publishing, whatever you want to say. The institutions are still under an oligarchical consensus that the way to organize this society is through the global war on terror and use that as a cover for every injustice, every outrage, every monstrosity uh, under the sun. So now the question is, how do you take the 9-11 truth that a lot of the um, U.S. and the world have understood and inject that into the institutions? And the obvious way to do it is the fact that we're now in the midst of an absolutely uncontrollable presidential election. You know, it's the first time since, uh, well, in some ways since the 1920s, but in other ways since the, the 1950s that you have an election where there's no obvious succession going on, there's no president running, vice president running, there's nothing like this. So it's a wide open field with about a dozen candidates in each of the two principal parties and other candidates that are also from third parties coming, uh, coming forward. So it's uncontrollable, it's a chaotic scene. So what I'm recommending is, if you want to do something right now, 2007 is a window of opportunity, you didn't have it last year, you won't have it next year. We've got the New Hampshire primary, the Iowa caucuses, the Nevada caucuses, and the South Carolina primary. What we need to do is go in there and say, uh, Mayor Giuliani or Senator McCain, Mrs. Clinton, uh, what about that big new Brzezinski warning of February 1st, that a terrorist act in the United States is being prepared as part of a scenario by intelligence forces, in effect, has got to be what he means, that will be blamed on Iran and will be used as a pretext for a thermonuclear or nuclear sneak attack on Iran. Mrs. Clinton, what are you going to do to stop it? Will you promise now to vote against that war? McCain, Senator McCain, you have written the preface to the popular mechanics uh, idiot book on the, the official version, a desperate attempt to defend this tissue of lies against obvious uh, scientific and, and political criticism. Mayor Giuliani, you were in Building 7 in your headquarters. You received a warning. You were told to get out of that building because number one and number two, the two really big skyscrapers, were going to come down. You got a warning, but the cops, the firemen, the office workers didn't get the warning. Why were you saved? Who gave you that warning? How did you know that? And then, Mr. Mayor, after the fact, 
How about the destruction of the crime scene? There's the National Transportation Safety Board. If a plane crashes, you can't go in there and touch that. That's got to be, the plane has got to be reconstructed. How come you felt free to violate federal law with your scoop and dump policy? Obviously not caring about the dead bodies of firemen and other victims. Get it all to fresh kill Staten Island. Melt down the columns. Were you trying to hide the thermite? Were you trying to hide the controlled demolition? Why did you destroy the crime scene? Why aren't you in jail, Mr. Mayor? Why are you running for office? We are going to swift vote Giuliani based on his crimes. Why was he warned and nobody else was warned? And why did he destroy the crime scene? That's a felony. You can't touch anything there. And of course, he did it and he banned photographs. Why did you ban photographs, Mr. Mayor? Were you trying to cover up the, uh, the fact that there was, you know, you can see that the columns had been sliced by thermite? How dare you say that the 9-11 movement plays on the fear of the public when you desperate Republican demagogues, your man Bush that you're following now, uh, slavishly, uh, you guys are the demagogues of terror. You've been using this and your man Rove to terrify people for six years. How dare you accuse a group of citizens who are trying to shed light on an important public event of somehow manipulating the public. So, uh, and all of them, right? And of course, for all of them, reopen 9-11. The Democrats worship at the altar of the Kane Hamilton Commission. We've just heard Willie Rodriguez tell a story as an eyewitness that completely explodes the official story. We know that uh, Kane and Hamilton knew, they knew at the end of the commission process, the top Pentagon and NORAD generals had committed massive perjury about the timing of all of this and other details. We know, for example, that Bob Woodward in his recent book, The uh, State of Denial, recounts a meeting, an emergency meeting of Tenet, Rice, and Kofor Black, suppressed by this, uh, this crazy Kane Hamilton report. We have the Abel Danger story, another explosive thing. In my view, Abel Danger are the terrorist controllers. In other words, they're following Atta to make sure he's, do he's doing what they're telling him to do. In other words, it's a, it's a means of checking up on employees. Every, every oppressive boss does it, and I'm sure Abel Danger uh, did it too. Weldon noticed the congressman who brought this forward, not a friend of mine, but he was destroyed by the FBI in the last election and, and to get rid of him, to shut him up, to show, don't you dare bring up able danger. That's getting too close to where the monkey sleeps, so to speak. So there's a whole array. Then we even have things like Picard and Ashcroft. Picard is the acting director of the FBI, and he said Ashcroft told me he didn't want to hear about Al-Qaeda. And Ashcroft said no. So one of them is committing perjury. I say Ashcroft. But junk this, the uh, Kane Hamilton Commission. Don't spend your time trying to enact their recommendations. The report is worthless. The recommendations are worthless. Reopen the thing with a, with a commission, and this time, don't try to stack it with Henry Kissinger. Uh, don't put these, these heavies uh, from the regime on there, but put, uh, put some of the family members, put some, some people who have a critical view. I think if you do that, you can change the world. For 2007, the watchword is 9-11 Truth Squads, get active or get radioactive.